a major setback today for hostage negotiations in the Israel-Hamas war. An Israeli official telling CBS News Hamas is unable to locate 40 Israeli hostages for a possible ceasefire deal. CBS News' Dick Brennan here now with more on this. Dick. Well, Maurice and Christine, the claim from Hamas is raising fears tonight for families that their loved ones are dead. Negotiators are proposing a six-week ceasefire along with the exchange of hostages for prisoners. Now all hostage families are really worried by this news. Well, it's, it, it's all horrifying. For Jonathan Dekelchen, the pain has lasted six months, six months since his son was taken hostage by Hamas. Now he hopes for a deal to end his family's suffering. We will have to see as the days move forward how committed Hamas is to getting this deal done by creating a situation where the fighting will stop. Hostages come home and the people of Gaza can breathe for a moment. Hamas told negotiators they didn't have 40 living hostages that meet the criteria for a proposed swap that would include women along with sick and elderly men in exchange for the release of hundreds of Palestinian prisoners. It's certainly very troubling uh, because that is the number one thing that they want right now is return of the hostages. Former Defense Secretary Mark Esper says this could be a major stumbling block for any deal. The latest count had that there were about 133 hostages remaining in Gaza. 36 or so of them were confirmed dead. So the question is, where are these remaining 92? An Israeli airstrike in Gaza killed three sons and four grandchildren of Ishmael Hania, the political leader of Hamas. Israel says all three sons were involved in Hamas's military operations. Allah! As Palestinians mark the end of Ramadan with the Muslim holiday of Eid al-Fit, they pray and they mourn, many spending the day at grave sites of their loved ones. It's enough, God, and I'm under sobbed. Enough with war. President Biden yesterday sharply criticized the way Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was conducting the war. I think what he's doing is a mistake. And today Biden said he's waiting for Netanyahu to make good on his commitments to flood Gaza with aid. And the fact is that we're... Uh, but getting in somewhere in the last three days, over 100 trucks, it's not enough. And there are even more concerns tonight. We're learning the commander of U.S. forces in the Middle East is heading to Israel amid increasing fear that Iran is preparing to launch a major attack against Israel in retaliation for last week's bombing of the Iranian consulate. Maurice. Dick, thank you.